Hello guys, today we'll have a review of an open source Laravel project, pretty simple one, which I've noticed on Twitter. A guy named Kusai released Avatary, which is a simple tool to generate the image from the initials. For example, I've installed it locally and you get the API initials with your name like Povilus Corp and it generates you PK if you have like Taylor Otwell, for example, as a parameter, then it generates TO. And there are more parameters like color, ddddd, something like that. So how it works under the hood, this lesson will be about using services, using a package called intervention image to generate the images, also using the API and some PHP 8 syntax. First, I want to emphasize that this project is really small, but this is the way for you getting started to get practice with Laravel. So I often get the question, how do I get a job if I don't have like two years of experience that everyone requires? So this is the project, this is the way you release anything on GitHub for free in public, you get the practice with something like API or some other features, and then you show that project to potential employer or freelance client. Even Kusai himself tells something like this on Twitter, like I wanted to build this project to practice and share the code because Nothing beats the practice. Golden words. Now let's dive into the code. First in composer.json I see this line. This project requires PHP 8 and it uses some of the syntax of PHP 8. And I know that quite a lot of you are still working with PHP 7.4 or even below. So I would advise you to upgrade. And for example, for me, it was pretty easy because I use Laravel Valet on my local MacBook. And Laravel Valet is a tool that can allow you to do something like this. So which PHP version to use depending on the project you work with. If you don't use Laravel Valet or if you're not on Mac OS, check the documentation on how you can switch the version in your PHP web server. And also as a reminder, if you Google PHP supported versions and go to the official page of php.net, current PHP 7.4 is out of active support in one month from now. So more and more projects will be PHP 8 only and even upcoming Laravel 9 in January 2022 is gonna support only PHP 8. So enough about PHP versions, now let's see the code. The whole project is actually one route in routes API, it's not routes web. There's avatar controller, which has one method of initials and returns the generated image. That's kind of it. But the whole logic is hidden under the hood with services. So first we get the request, request query gets the query parameters from URL, like these ones and then it assigns default value to them and then passes to the new avatar generator service. And this is the thing actually from PHP 8. So from PHP 8, you can assign not only the value to the method, but also define what is the method name. In my previous videos, you probably have seen something like that, which was PHP storm hints. In this case, it's actual code. So avatar generator in the constructor, accepts these parameters and these are passed with names because with this syntax you may miss some parameters, skip some parameters and it will still work because the parameter has default value here. If we refresh, nothing breaks, it still is generated with the default value of background color. So this is the benefit of using names instead of just parameter orders. Now what's inside of avatar generator? The main method we need to take a look at, let's trace it down actually, image generate. Let's look for generate function, which is this one and what it has. Draw text, draw text, let's click it. It gets the shape, then gets the text and return the canvas and get shape uses circle or rectangle. And if we go to draw circle shape, we have init canvas, which actually under the hood uses image. So under the hood of all of that, there is an image which comes from the package called intervention image. It allows to perform a lot of operations with images, like for example, rectangle, like for example, circle, what else do we have it? Background, then we have canvas text and all of that. So avatar generator is a service and that is actually a good practice to load off the controller all the operations related to some entity, in this case, avatar. And a lot of those functions are actually private, which means the main function is generate, but it calls a lot of private functions of that service under the hood. Another interesting pattern of the service usage is color picker, which is another service in the use 
section you have app service color picker and all it does is just pick random color from the array so here's the list of colors and we have static function of pick to get a random color and it is used in the avatar generator service if we search for color picker we have generate color which uses static function of that service so you can separate the logic even more and i like that approach so you have controller which calls avatar service which in turn call separate service just for the colors. In this case, that one function may be kind of an over-engineering and that color picker could be inside of the same avatar, but generally that separation of concerns is a good way following the solid principles of smaller classes, each of them having its own purpose, which makes the whole code of the project more readable in the future. And also there is another service called initials. So if we click initials, we land in app services and a separate service is about generating initials. In this case, not sure I would use static functions because if this function is called from another function, it looks to me more like a private function, but maybe I'm missing something here. But anyway, another separation of concerns for initials as a separate service. The only thing I would change here is the naming. I like to have suffixes, so I would call this not avatar generator, but avatar service. Then this would be initial service and this will be color service or something like that. Finally, while looking at the avatar controller, I noticed this one, API response helper. And I don't see it anywhere actually used, but if we click, we'll land in a package called Laravel API response helpers. And then I noticed it in the composer JSON, this one. So what it actually does, it's a trait that allows you to return the API response with more like human readable functions like respond not found, respond with success, respond okay, respond something, something. And I see a lot of people doing that as some kind of a trait anyway in their API projects, or maybe as macros or separate base controller, something like that. So apparently there is a package for that. And if we go to its GitHub, it's pretty recent actually, 29 days ago, but already pretty popular with 300 GitHub stars. So if you want to call more readable functions, responses from your API controllers, I guess this package is pretty useful. And that's it, see a small project, but getting back to the main idea, it's a practice project for himself, for the author, and he can also show it to potential clients or employers in the future. So I would advise you to get some ideas for projects like this one. It may be the project which already exists. It doesn't really matter that much it matters what you want to practice. In this case, he practiced services, for example, and manipulating images. Maybe for future projects, you would want to practice some design pattern like repositories, like DDD, like modules, whatever you call it. Just figure out some small project, implement that, put it on GitHub. I may share it on Twitter or maybe on YouTube and you will get practice and exposure. Final thing, if you want to get more practice with the API in Laravel, I have a few courses around that. So I have a separate how to create Laravel API, which is a bit older one with Laravel 7, but it's still highly relevant. Or I have the newest course with Flutter mobile app with Laravel API. And the first part of that course is actually creating the API with Sanctum, with API resources, status codes, and stuff like that. So if you want to dive deeper, welcome to the course. You can purchase that course for $29 plus VAT, or I advise you to check out the yearly membership for all of my courses, which is 21 courses at the moment. And just this morning, I got a new idea for the 22nd course, which will be launched in October. For now, it's a secret project, but you will get all of that if you are part of yearly membership. The link for that will be in the description below and see you guys in other videos.